Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, everybody. It's Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow coming to you Monday night after the Mavericks fall to the Denver Nuggets in holy frustrating fashion, 117 to 113. Josh Bow, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. I I'm feel mad. like I'm I, mad. I know. Just take it away, man. I, I, <laughs> the Mavericks think- bigs as a unit suck. And Right now, they're not bad players. Porzingis is not a bad player. But in a game where they needed something against the Denver Nuggets and their MVP caliber big, do you hear that, Harper? MVP caliber um, big, they all really, really played poorly. I, I don't even know where to start. I, I, maybe we should just discuss the game a little bit before before me being a lunatic. What do you think? Sure, that works. We can do that. Um, for me, I think the game kind of encapsulated everything about the Mavericks season so far. Uh, again, I think we should, you know, Mavericks lose 117, 113 to the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets were pretty much at full strength for this game. Uh, they had all their key guys and when they have all their key guys, they are a pretty good basketball team. Yeah. Uh, and it looked, you know, in the first half, the Mavericks offense was actually doing pretty well because, all things considered, the Denver offense was just kind of insane. And it just looked like one of those games where it's like, man, the Mavericks just – they're going to do everything they can, but, you know, they're still going to lose by 13, 14, 15 points because the Nuggets are that good and the Mavericks are missing three or four starting player caliber players. Uh, and then what's what really stunk, I think, and I think what is probably making everyone pretty mad about the game is that the Mavericks finally got – a gift uh, this season. They're in a season where they have not caught any breaks. They catch a break in the third quarter where Jamal Murray loses his mind and hits Tim Hardaway Jr. in the nuts. He gets ejected. So you're basically playing almost the entire second half without Murray. And thanks to Luca's brilliance in the first half, the Nuggets never were able to run away with the game. So like, I'm sure myself and you, Kirk, and everyone watching uh, was like the Mavs, could steal this now. I mean, they got up. They got up 90 to 85. They had a five-point lead with a minute plus in the third quarter, and then every single non-Luka player proceeded to all over the place. Yeah, and that's what – it went went from shorthanded, tough, you know, rough loss to a close team to we're going to steal it to disappointing loss, and that just – you know, the Mavericks are eight and nine on the season, and that that's kind of their season, right? That's their season so far. Well, and it's not going to get easier. We talked about this two days ago because they have back to back to back to back to backs against Utah and Phoenix, where are where it's just going to be a, a, a bit of a mess because those teams, frankly, are better than Dallas right now. And I you know, Luka Doncic is such a challenging player to accurately assess because his counting stats are just out of this world, 35 points, 
16 assists, 11 rebounds. I mean, the guy, and then four steals. He had nine against Denver on the season so far. He Mm -hmm. was everywhere doing everything. I could lapse him specifically. The the kind of game-sealing three from Michael Porter Jr. was a result of him pouting at the ref for not getting an offensive foul call. Uh, But, frankly, the Mavericks shouldn't have been down by that much. This game was lost because the Mavericks' bigs did not show up. And I'm really not sure who to start with because when Rick Carlisle opted to start the Willie Cauley Stein, Chris Dapps Porzingis front court again, we all had a cow in our slack because it, it, it speaks to Dallas not understanding what they're good at. And that's probably not fair. They know more about this than we do, but Willie Cauley Stein is terrible right now. He could be better. He actually had some brief flashes in the second quarter, but he was awful in 27 minutes. He had three rebounds, gave up at least five that I counted. I I was losing my mind. I would rewind the play to watch him go box out air. And then Michael Porter jr. Or uh, Jokic would go grab the board. I mean, what does he think his job is? Yeah, that was uh and then when you combine that with 0 for 3 from the floor, uh he got blocked by guards. Like he got blocked twice. not only a guard, a six foot tall guard. <laughs> yeah. Uh not a great game for him. Plus seventeen though, Kirk. So um yeah, I'm sure. yeah, plus plus minus numbers. This is a game where I'm going to choose to ignore plus minus numbers. I don't know. I mean, look, he did play a better second half. He really he did. did. But he's such an offensive liability, the Mavericks cannot pass to him. He's 2 of 4 from the line. He sucks at free throws. Somebody sent me a clip of him pregame shooting three-pointers, and I about threw my phone. Why did the Mavericks re-sign him? He is awful, and I cannot stand watching him anymore. I, I, I just, I'll probably change my tune because this is how I am. I'm a lunatic. But watching him is so frustrating because he's so athletically gifted and just cannot put it together. Yeah, and I, uh, I think these games we're seeing from Willie Cauley-Stein, you asked why the Mavericks re-signed him. I mean, doesn't this explain, you know, the the reporting that came out during the offseason that the Mavericks were trying to sign Marc Gasol with their mid-level exception? Um, and you could see why. Like, uh, I think if things went according to plan for the Mavericks, he would not he wouldn't be on the roster. Uh, and yeah. I think, you know, the Mavericks do a good job of, of making it sound like whatever they end up with is, was, Oh, that was, you know, that is the plan all along. You know, they're very, you know, they're very supportive of the guys that get on their team. Um, but I mean, we read reports that like, as soon as free agency started, the Mavericks reached out to Marcus Gasol and were hopeful to get him before he went to the Lakers. Yep. Uh, and by the time he agreed to the Lakers, Collie Stein was kind of it in terms of big men available, uh and free agency and i mean we can go down the path about how many times no, has that no, happened no. to the mavericks yeah. not tonight but um yeah i think that answers your question kirk i don't like I, I in my heart of hearts i do not believe they truly want him to be one of their biggest minute getters uh, on this team uh it's just circumstance whether it's uh you know bad bad run in free agency you know, COVID injuries. It's just, it's like a perfect storm of shit that's allowed him to play uh, as much as he's played. And he showed why he has, he's on his third team in, in three years, basically. I mean, Luca is just serving him layups at the rim. And he, he is so, he's not unathletic. It's like watching a wide receiver who doesn't know how to time his jumps in that he, he like the dude always seems to catch the ball on the down side of a jump and it's really painful. And and so we should probably move off him and then we need to talk about Chris Stapps Porzingis who since coming back from his knee surgery has played pretty pretty good basketball and this was a dud of a game. 33 minutes, 16 points on 6 of 18 shooting. One of eight from beyond the arc. And then the number which really, really upset me was six total rebounds. And he had the opportunity to go grab, like the Nuggets ended up with 14 offensive rebounds. He was the the focal point for a number of those rebounds. I mean, the Mavericks got got out-rebounded by 15 tonight. 
and he is a huge, huge reason why. Did not attack the class, let things get slapped away from him. Uh, for the guy who is ostensibly the Mavericks rim de- rim defender, he had one really cool block of Jokic early, and then proceeded to get worked by everybody that was you know six feet you know six inches shorter than him the rest of the game. I know he's got more in him. I know he's going to figure it out. But that was a game where they needed something from him, and he looked like the player that people criticize. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, and I think it was especially brutal because, uh, I, I mean, this wasn't the stretch that – I don't know if this you want to call this the stretch that lost the Mavericks a game, but – you know, Luca likes to get, you know, Rick likes to give Luca a break to start the fourth quarter so he can bring him back in and have him close the game as fresh as possible. And when you acquire a player like Christoph Porzingis, the thought is, well, there's our second star and there is someone we can have on the floor while Luca gets his rest and we can try and, you know, still be a good and competitive basketball team. And my goodness, Kirk, the fourth quarter started and Luca was on the bench and Christoph was in there and he played maybe like. <laughs> You want to know I mean, his stats? I actually, I actually wrote them down while I was waiting for you pregame. Yeah, hold on. I, I mean, hit him with me because uh, hi, my hyperbole meter is going off because I want to say just watching it like that might have been one of the worst stretches of basketball he's played uh, since he's been in Dallas. It was, it was rough to watch. It was so to start the quarter, he had three missed shots. Then he was subbed out. He had no other statistics in the first, you know, four minutes. Then he was subbed out. He subbed back in. Upon subbing back in. He was charged with a turnover of an offensive foul. That might have been Luca's fault, but yeah, Luca started the pick and roll too early. He he left. He started his drive before Kristaps mm-hmm. could even get there. I right. So that one maybe isn't really on him. Then he gets fouled. He goes one of two at the line. Then he has a turnover where he basically throws the ball to Jokic as they send a double at him on another post up, and then he miss. Then he misses a three. He also had one rebound in there. And that and, and that know, miss with the free never, throw with that miss with yeah. the free throws that we should add. Y- yeah, you'll agree. You said it in our Slack that should have been an and one. Uh, it was it was a very Soft. finishable play. Yeah, it was a very Soft. finishable play. It was a he should have dunked the ball is what he should have done. He got fouled by another short guy, and I uh, that just happened all night with you know, <sighs> and and so it's it's just one of those one of those things where. Porzingis, frankly, has to do more. He'll probably talk about it in the post game. Like he's a very honest assessor of what he's good and what he's bad at. He took a lot of good threes tonight, just did not make them. But I, I just, I find myself very frustrated with that level of play because Luca had Luca is is so far he's not above criticism. But when Luca's the one doing the most it kind of gives him a little bit of leeway to where when I see him do something stupid, like the there was a big three that I was complaining about in Slack where he just took a lazy step back in like the third quarter when the Mavericks should have been up by more or should have uh, really put put the, you know, basically pushed the gas pedal down. And, and you know, it's like you forgive that sort of stuff because he's so good elsewhere. But Luka didn't really have a great fourth quarter either where he missed a lot of short bunnies. Uh, Luca didn't get a free throw in the second half, which was some real hot garbage, in my opinion, with some of the contact that he was getting. But, you know, with some of the other calls the Mavericks are getting, it's like, what are you going to do there? You know, some of this is, is you know, that's that's a sort of a wash. But I don't know. I, I This is one of the many games I think Dallas is going to look back at and say, well, we should have won more. You know, we should have done better. They're, the Mavericks are two and four at home right now which is patently unacceptable i I just i don't know maybe i'll feel differently about this in the morning but they're better than this even with the guys that they have i or maybe they're not maybe i'm just wrong well the i think the the thing is is christops is if christops is who he's supposed to be then then you're correct kirk because if if you have an mvp type player and then christops who is an all-star top 20-ish range player, mm-hmm. then this is a game they win, right? Like if he's, you know, you look at his previous uh, three games, he was over, t- or actually, man, his previous four games, he was over 20 points. His last three games, he was 50%, 80%, 57% from the floor. Like if they got that Kristaps, uh, they win this game. They probably win it by like seven or eight points. Um 
you know, when the Mavericks acquired him, like they, you need to at least two stars to win in the NBA. You can't be a one-star team anymore. Uh, you know, even Portland with Damian Lillard is learning, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're plunky every season, but the reason why they don't, they're not a true finals contender is because, you know, you can't just do it with one guy, you know, Dirk might be the last one, <laughs> the last like one star championship winner, I guess, unless you want to count Kawhi Leonard, but man, that team has a bunch of other good players, but he just needed to be better. And he wasn't. And, you know, he missed, like you said, his, his, his eight three point shots. Like I don't, he didn't take really any bad ones. And, you know, that's a shame that he started so slow from three, but that was kind of the case uh, last season. So he, you just hope that he, you know, as the season progresses and he comes back from that knee surgery, that things are better. Well, they, somebody, we should do a, a post on his post-ups because for a guy like he's getting more post-ups. Carl talked about how the post-up is not a good play last season and yet is feeding for the Mavericks, and he talked about this with Luca. The Ma- the Mavericks are feeding Porzingis at in at in the post more than they should be. Um, I I just can't stress this enough. He is a very good face up shooter out of post ups. All of his post moves are hot trash. Just because he makes one now and again is not the same. He he shoots post ups like a player who has been programmed with a series of things on what he should do. None of his steps are natural. He missed a two foot bunny in the first half where if he just would have drop stepped and laid it in with his left hand, we're talking George Mike and drill crap from when you're in middle school, he would have scored, but instead he had committed to this funky hook push shot that misses wide, right? When you're at the rim. And again, I'm sure people are going to be mad at me who actually listen to this, who think I'm being too hard on him. And he's so skilled, but he's just not natural down there. At least when he's facing up, he's, he has the, the, like the size advantage. And he did that a few times tonight. Um, The first play of the game was a post up where he faced and shot up. He has missed a shot uh, where he's a little, you know, I I really think he wants to prove himself against a center like Jokic. And he's just not at that level. Um, I, I, he'll come around, he'll be fine, you know, assuming, you know, everything proceeds at a a certain order, but gosh, that was, that was challenging to watch. Yeah. And they got, uh, you know, I've been, I've been begging or just wondering, like, are they going to ever get a game while all these guys are out? Are they going to get a game, someone to pop off the bench and just randomly score 15, 16, 17, 20? Someone uh, did tonight. Did yeah. you see who did it? It was James Johnson. Yeah, uh, yeah. he had a good game. Uh, he made two three pointers. Uh, the one of them, the the ones he made, they looked they looked way better than what he was shooting uh, earlier in the season. Um, yeah, uh, and and it's a shame. You know, it's a shame that they they wasted that. It's a shame that they wasted a monster Luca effort. Um, it. You know, another thing I'm curious about, Kirk. I said this in our Slack. Uh, but it, I, I don't feel like I saw a lot of Brunson in the fourth quarter. Uh, and I know, you know, <laughs> this will be funny for you, but like, uh, you know, he had a minus 16 in his 29 minutes, but he was four or four from the field, two of two from three, yeah. scored 12 points. I would have, I would have liked to see a little bit more of him in the final three or four minutes. Uh, but I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, I don't know, because it's probably a him or Hardaway decision. And or Hardaway. Burke, Burke, Burke closed. Burke closed, and yes. and that's an interesting choice. I'm not really sure why that was because the data is telling you one thing, but then the counting stats are telling you something else. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy who was really – who we're not really laying near enough of the challenge <laughs> at is Tim Hardaway Jr. What who, a crazy-ass game for him. Man. I mean, he sucked until he got hit in the balls. Someone <laughs> hit him in the balls every game. I know. He was trash until he got hit in the nuts, and then he scored 10 straight points. Yeah. yeah it's all or nothing for him man he cannot he cannot play a game where it's like oh i'll go two for five in the first half and and four for seven and this like you know like it's it's oh i missed my first 12 shots and then i made my next six or yeah. like that's it like it's that's how it is i mean the shots matter but where he really gets where he really gets away with murder is we complain about or me i complain about guys like willie collie stein looking terrible on defense there was an incredible double back cut by two Denver Nuggets. Um, 
where Tim Hardaway is standing between them doesn't move with either. I took a screenshot of it. And he's just standing at the wing by himself while Porter Jr. is under the basket, who is his man. And then another player was at the elbow, who was close to the and, and he's just standing there. I mean, he just has – he's an awful defender. And they keep – like, the fact that they started him on Murray was insane, which is why Murray was so angry and why he – because, like, Harden was fouling him, <laughs> and the refs just weren't calling it. And it I, I just – I don't – some of the some of the decisions for Carlisle have to be out of necessity because yep. like wh- there's just oh god like why would you put Tim Hardaway on Jamal Murray I'm uh, I don't know well, he probably, he can be better yeah it's probably because well I mean every Nugget perimeter player is basically an off ball player because Jokic has the ball at the top of the f- the floor so often right. but of the Nuggets guys with you know Murray probably has the ball in his hands the most and it's probably one of those things. I feel like Rick did this with Monte back in the Monte Ellis days where it's like he is so space cadet off the ball that it's like <laughs> even though it sounds insane, let's put him on the ball if a guy's gonna have the ball in his hands a lot because he see you know it's like like you you've got your dog trying to get him into the house you're dangling keys just like just to get him to pay attention and uh, sure. it's it's like that's the maybe that's the way you you fo- he he's focused so like I imagine that's got to be the the thought process um but yeah it's not great and then i would imagine if they had their full roster i mean he's probably coming off the bench anyway so uh it's just another one of those things where how many times can we i, I don't know how many times we could say it but like covid sucks major ass <laughs> and it's really oh. it's really got this team in, in, a, in a in a bad way sometimes and it's not getting any better i, I we might as well talk about that uh yeah. we don't know much but we know enough and Maxi Kleba is the odd man out in terms of people who are not looking to return anytime soon. Uh, we have seen Josh Richardson and per the Zoom call in the pregame, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith and Dwight Powell may be resuming activities in short order. And and I believe all three of those guys are now uh, in street clothes on the bench. I believe okay. Finney Smith and Powell were there with Richardson uh, today, uh, sitting which, behind the Mavericks bench. Which, if that's the case, that just leaves Maxi Kleba and Kleba, yeah. as we have found out. I mean, to a certain degree, we knew this, but it's been really emphasized. Kleba's versatility is missed, and mm-hmm. he ain't coming back. Uh, you know, we're probably talking not this week for sure. Yeah, no. at least five more games, and then yeah. that is really challenging. I, I don't really have anything else to say about it <laughs> other than I hope he hope he gets well soon because it's probably fairly frustrating if he's feeling any better or, you know, if he's not feeling any better, probably a little worrisome. Yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, that's what Trey Burke talked about when he got here. He was He said he was basically sick as a dog for like 20 days, 20, 25 days until he finally got over it and then, you know, kind of had to – get back into shape. So that's the part that like, I haven't talked about a lot on our podcast or written about, but I talk about in Slack because that's where we, that's where I go to be a doomer, (laughs) not not (laughs) as much in public, but like, that's what, that's what worries me. You know, I want the, you know, just these guys, I want them to get healthy and just personally for them to be healthy. You want them to be okay because it's a scary thing. And it's not just like, you know, it's just so weird with COVID, you know, I'm not a doctor, but you know, some of these guys come back and it's like, they never had it. And then, you know, we've seen examples of guys come back and it's, they're just a little off, you know, they're not the same or it takes them a longer time to, to, to acclimate and get back into the shape they were before they got sick. And it's like, you just don't know. And with Maxi, you know, being still not, you know, it's been about almost two weeks, I think, since he's been out and he still hasn't progressed to a point where he is allowed to sit behind the bench. You imagine that means he's still either testing positive or showing symptoms or he's still sick. And, and, and do you just worry for him as a human? And then you're, it's just, you hope you just don't know how guys are going to react coming back from testing positive to this. Cause it's still, you know, it's a new disease. We're still learning more about it. And it's, uh, I think there's a certain aspect of, the Mavericks Twitterverse or fandom that thinks that these guys are going to come back and everything's okay. And when they're hundred percent, like to a degree, yes. But how long is it going to take once they get back? Like, you know, is it still going to yeah. take them another three or four games once they get back to, to really get back? 
yeah so that's the part i worry about but that's just worrying for worrying sake because i feel like there's nothing else for me to say because every single one of these games i'm like man if they had these guys they'd probably win you know yeah man i'm i'm just kind of in a doomer mode right now where (laughs) i told myself before all this happened that if the mavericks made it through this five game stretch this kind of um the stretch against the nuggets the jazz and the suns if they made it through winning a single game with the roster as assembled i'd be pretty excited which is why i'm so frustrated about this loss because i it was it was handed to them they had a chance to win it and they just didn't because they started that game so sloppily or they started the fourth so sloppily and you just handed it to a guy like jokic who is a killer who is a killer I just and 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 let me let me just talk about something because it's late in the podcast and anybody who actually hears this, I had to turn away from the Mavs broadcast because I couldn't handle how they were talking about Jokic, who is an MVP candidate. That dude is so good at basketball. Man, watching him play, he had a hook shot, like a sky hook that was over um it wouldn't Luca. It might have been it was somebody like hit the back of the rim and then like soft bounced in and like that's so hard to do yeah he's he's so good he's so good and 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 it's one of these things where if the season goes on and they keep playing like this he will be an mvp candidate a year later than people thought he would which you know i don't know him and luca seem to really like going at each other which is lots of fun to watch i don't know i hope we get a couple more nuggets games this year just for that Dude, the NBA needs to find out how to get these guys playing a playoff series because, holy crap, every single Mavs-Nuggets game since Luka's been in the league, I feel like, is comes down to the final two minutes. These games are outrageous. Well, and, and then there's also probably one of the more fascinating players to watch. Now we're talking about Nuggets, so I hope everybody's tuned <laughs> out. Michael Porter Jr. is nuts. I don't know how to describe him as a basketball player other than kind of an insane person because he just, he he makes two horrendous mistakes and then buries an impossible three point shot. I mean, the guy, and then his rebounding, I, I don't know. I really, I just like the nuggets because I feel like they're, they're just such an interesting collection of players. I do hope the Mavericks play them in the playoffs at some point. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and I understand like to get back to you being kind of, you know, down, you know, I really think, you know, man, that Murray ejection in the third quarter, like, I really think that was it because like in my head, I was like, man, fine. Like think about this Maverick season. They don't start the season with KP, you know, Lucas starts the season out of shape because he, he's either, I don't know what happens, but he thinks the, either the team told him, you know, the, that the season's going to start in January or February and it doesn't. Uh, you know, no KP, you know, Dwight Powell does not look like himself, which is a super bummer. You know, even if you don't like Dwight Powell, like that sucks that the Achilles injury robbed him of, of what he could contribute. Right. Uh, and then, you know, after all that, Luca finally starts getting going and, you know, KP, you hear more, more about KP practicing and then boom, the COVID stuff happens and yep. you're playing games all of a sudden where you're literally, they played a game this season where they missed six of their top eight players uh and they've played for about almost three weeks now without at least four of their top uh eight players and that's like you're just like man can they get can some can the basketball gods throw this team a bone uh no pun intended here but they kind of did with Jamal Murray uh hitting Hardaway in the nuts and getting ejected and I'm just thinking in my head I'm like fine like this is the break they get they get a feel good win, you know, they thanks to a fluky outcome that they deserve this, you know? Like they've yep. been they've been through the ringer this season. They needed this, and then they lost. It's yep. just like shit, man. Like just sucks. I understand why it's a it's a bummer loss. I mean, I, I hope this is the hard part of the season. I hope that we look back at this. You know, it's game 17. I hope we look back at this, you know, after the the March, uh the, the early March break when they play their their next 35 or so games and we can look back and say all right you know the the Mavericks suffered they grew and they you know they're a better team because of it you know right now our fan base wants the Mavericks to make a like a trade they want the Mavericks to do something rash and I don't blame them because we were promised a a better team than this and circumstances 
And, you know, however the Mavericks picked up COVID, the, however four players pl- and then another one contracted COVID is, 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 you know, up for debate. I will simply say that. I know there's a lot of people out there who are uh, probably, uh, you know, it's, it's not their fault. A lot of us have managed not to get COVID. I'll tell you that. Um, and, and this is just one of these these parts of the year where we can look back, you know, maybe a month from now, maybe two months from now and say, gosh, that was like a character building time where the Mavericks figured it out. And and hopefully all my doom and gloom nonsense where people will throw it back in my face. I would love that. That would be awesome. Yes, I would too. And, and you know, they're getting these guys at the end of the bench or are getting some minutes, even if they're not necessarily doing too great but it's something uh and although josh green got sent to the phantom zone tonight so uh, r.i.p josh green it was good while we knew you <laughs> but uh he'll be back he'll be back he'll play uh, I, I wonder i don't know it is kind of interesting though because the nuggets really i mean this would have you thought this would have been a game for green because the nuggets don't really play a, a ton of bigs uh you know it's basically Jokic. you know Millsap paid 19 minutes and and jermichael green played 22 but for the most part, you know, you they play a lot of, you know, Murray, Harris, Barton, Michael Porter, like they, Monty Morris. They play a lot of guards and wings in their in their rotation. So he thought, I, I thought Green would get a chance, but uh, he did not. And uh, we'll just see what happens next game. He'll he'll have to get a chance again because with the way the season's going. Yeah, and that's really like that's the flip side. Before we get out of here, about you know the the fact that they get like a day off. You know, Brad Brad Townsend reported uh, just now that Luka Doncic and James Johnson indicated that the Mavericks met after the game and several people, including Rick Carlisle, spoke, but they declined to give specifics about what was said. And it, it, it's just, it's got to be crushing is really what it is. And they've got to be talking about pushing through. Uh, that That's the only thing I can really think of because, you know, very besides people playing a little bit better, um, and the Mavericks would have had a chance to win. And then I would have been laughing about, man, wasn't it cool that the Mavericks escape with Willie Cauley Stein's three rebounds in 27 minutes, like that sort of stuff. So, yep. Yep. but Hey, good news is that they play the Utah jazz twice in a row next. And the Utah jazz <laughs> might be the NBA's hottest team in the league. And it's not like the jazz have had the Mavs number over the last uh, year and a half. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're about to find out. We're about to find out if, uh, if anything is different because it'd be worth looking into because I feel like Luca, uh, or I feel like Porzingis didn't play in some of the jazz matchups and, and he changes the math if he's able to hit shots. So. Right. Gotta, gotta get Gobert out of the paint with uh, Porzingis. Cannot afford another one for eight three point shooting oh. night from him against the which, Jazz team. Which I doubt we will. You know, I feel yeah. like he's he, he just he's 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 shooting all wrists just like he was at the start of last year. And I think that that will shake itself out over time. Well look at me. Our our audio snafu, which hopefully you guys never noticed, uh <laughs> pivoted from me. You know, I, I apparently droned on to myself for almost a minute and a half and it didn't get recorded, uh, where I was very grumpy. And so hopefully you all missed that. And now, you know, Josh and I will be back uh, Wednesday night because Josh and I will never do anything. That's what COVID has done to the world, so we don't even get to take games off. We'll be back in a couple of nights talking about Mavs Jazz, and hopefully we will be uh, really excited. Doesn't sound doesn't that sound nice, Josh? Yeah, I want to be excited. I want to be excited, too. Okay, everybody, this has been Kirk and Josh with a uh, another slightly morbid episode of Mavs Money <laughs> After Dark. We'll talk to you a little later in the week. 